Okay, this uh, video is going to take you through how to do the WPAP Pop Art, which stands for Wedha Abdul Rasid uh, Pop Art. Basically, it's the W is for his uh, first name. He was the Indonesian that created um, this style of geometric, very colorful art that we've looked at in class. And the PAP stands for Pop Art portrait. Um, so we're going to look up him a little bit in class. There are communities now that are based on the work that he's done. So you can see here, this is one of the uh, WPAP communities and their website and all of the different galleries that extend off of that. So um, there's a ton of stuff to kind of look at here and some very interesting work and some uh, beautifully colored work, of course. And it's such an easy thing to create and you when you look these up I know we've looked at them in class there are literally thousands of these images of all types of um, all types of people and here even on Pinterest you see a whole variety of them um, the things that we noticed about them is that they're all geometric in the way that they um, represent the shapes and the colors there's no curves everything is a straight line or an angle 45 degree 90 degree whatever the degree of the angle and basic shapes bold beautiful colors in the spots that are light on the person they've used white or a very light color and then as it gets darker they use a dark color but they also fill the spaces in with more shapes so we're going to do a very similar project to this in Illustrator and here's how it works. You're going to go online and you're going to find an image of a person. So <clears throat> I'm going to type in just an old man's face. Now you could use for this project a celebrity or yourself or a teacher in the building. Um, once you find and go to Google and go to images, I would like you to go to search tools at the top here and I do want you to pick an image that has color. So we're going to go to size, larger than 1024 by 768. Once this pops up, please choose, um, like I said, a face that has uh, color to it. So even this one would work, let's just say. So I'm going to click it, and then I'm going to click view image. Now, once you have this funny photograph here, you're going to take this and drag it into your folder. So I'm going to click, drag, and drop into my folder. For now, I'm going to pretend that my desktop is my folder and I'm going to minimize that. Then you're going to go into Illustrator, open up Illustrator, go to File and New. Once you get into Illustrator here, File and New. The size of this document is going to be a tabloid size. That's 11 by 17 in inches and you're going to hit OK. And then you're going to go to File and Place. Once you go to File and Place, when this pops up, you're going to want to find, in my, my case it's the desktop, in your case it will be the, your um, folder, and you're going to find the image that we just dragged in, which in this case is this dude, and make sure link is not checked and template is not checked, just as you see it there, and hit Place. Now, depending on the size of the file, it might be huge like this, so I'm going to just zoom out, Command minus, 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 I'm going to hold Shift and pull from the corner, I'm actually going to hold Shift and Option together at the same time and just kind of pull in like that. Now once you have that, you can see your layers panel here and your transparency panel which is right there. I'm going to pull down the transparency slider just a little bit so it's kind of a lighter shade, all right, but not too light. And then I'm going to lock that layer by hitting the lock toggle button and then I'm going to add a new layer, create new layer. And on layer 2 now you're going to take your pen tool, regular pen tool on this project, all in regular pen tool. You're going to go to your fill and you're going to make it a no fill for now. Later you will be coloring it in, but for now make it none. And then your stroke should be a color you'll be easily able to see. Um, it's really up to you what color you pick. For now, I'll pick a uh, magenta. No, I'll pick this, this kind of red color, all right? And then your stroke size should be about a 0.5 or less. Even 0.25 would be fine. And you're going to go zoom in on your character or on your person, whoever you have. And you're going to start very simply by creating just some straight lined edges. Now, you can start with lines you see, like I kind of see this line. Now remember, you're not going to click and pull. You're not doing that at all. You're only going to click, let go, click, let go, click, let go, click, let go. And you have to make a shape. So I'm going to follow. Now this guy has a ton of wrinkles, so there is a lot to follow. But I'm going to kind of do that. Now the more detail you give, the better this project will look. The more shapes you have, the better the project will look. And how you color it, of course, will, de will determine how really good it looks right at the end. But after you draw one shape, you hold the Command key on your keyboard, you click away anywhere else. 
to get away from that piece. And then you go right back to it, and you'll see it says anchor it's little, in little green. That means I'm, I'm right on an, another old piece. I'm going to zoom in even closer so you can see a little bit better. There, actually, that's a little too close. Right about there is good. As long as you have view smart guides on and snap to point all on, um, you'll be able to do this where you can you see like when I go near it a little green pops up so that's telling me I'm right on the old one so if I click right there I can create a new shape now and this is it's somewhat random but it also has to do with what your eye sees so here's another shape now look, just to be clear you must complete all your shapes by closing them back to where you started so there are now two shapes I click the command key and I click away so I've already got two shapes for this guy. Now, any areas that are dark, for the eyebrows, for example, here's how I would do the eyebrows. Click, 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 try to follow what you see for the eyebrow. Remember, I'm just clicking and letting go. Any areas that are dark, so the eyebrows are dark, and I go back to where I started, I create that one big shape, I hit command, I click away. But I know that the inside is going to be pretty dark of the eyebrow, so I can create more interior shapes. Now here's what happens when you create an interior shape. You click, you click. Now this is somewhat random, it's kind of up to what your eye sees, there's no right or wrong here. Now I click there, I click here let's say, but I'm not done. I actually have to go to here and then back to where I started so that this is actually its own shape you see that you have to close up every single shape the more pieces that you put in the better this will all look later okay now let's just say you had a whole bunch of these shapes and you were ready to go and you were done from here you are going to click the shape with the black arrow or with the group selection tool and once you grab it, you're going to go up to the top and you can fill it with a color. Right now it has a, a red stroke on the outside which you could change to any color you want. Or if you want to eliminate it, you would make it the same color as this. So I could do like this so they both have the same piece to it so there's no actual edge. Or you could eliminate it completely. So I could click here and see if eliminating it is okay. Sometimes eliminating it works, sometimes it kind of leaves a gap in between, so I often make the stroke the same color as the fill. All right? You're going to create all of that. Any light areas, see how it's light on his nose, light on his cheek, light on his lip, light on his collar, his jacket, those are all light areas, so you're gonna use light colors. What color you use is up to you, but make it a lighter version, right? You're gonna take the value down a bit, the tint, down a bit right and then when you get to your bold and bright colors your darker areas you can go with darker colors of course so your color choices are, are, are very much up to you we're going to take a look at the color chart in the room that talks about um, the psychology of color and the um, you know the emotion that color drives so you can kind of throw in those emotional um, colors into this and you're just going to save as you go and eventually we're going to get rid of the bottom piece and you'll only be left with what you've created here. It's a very simple project and for your background for this you can um, throw in some of these shapes that we can select and then use for the background. Come see me for the background. It'll all make sense.